This is what is done in intelligence in general, both by intelligence services and by the militaries. Um, you test these response times. And we've seen from the Chinese in recent years the use of the kind of balloons over Taiwan, near Japan, near Korea. So it's not that unusual. And I think the Chinese really wanted to make sure that at least if Secretary Blinken were going to come to Beijing and talk about building guardrails, about not letting U.S.-China relations spill over into conflict, then he needs to feel what conflict might feel like. That is, that is, if we, the United States keeps forward engagement along the Chinese periphery, well, America has to feel forward engagement from China. Uh, even a balloon over the homeland is, is a type of uh, vulnerability, is a type of feeling of vulnerability. So um, it is quite a provocative move. I mean, I think at this point, intentional or whether China intentionally uh, sent this over the U.S. Uh, over U.S. territory or not is irrelevant. I think the damage is done in the sense that um, the U.S. got a front row seat to what um, China is doing to the U.S. as far as intelligence gathering is concerned, and also what it's willing to do because it's it's quite. Uh, you know, your everyday Americans were able to see, um, you know, they got a, quite a personal view of China's spying program, being able to like physically see it in the air, um, and it loitered for, as, as you know, several days. So, um, so I think from a public perspective and public opinion point of view, it's tremendously damaging to the U.S.-China relationship because it showed the extent of China's spying program and what they're willing to do to... Uh, gather intelligence from the United States. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I am right now. There is a ground stop on our airport. You know, given that DOD was tracking this well before it came into Montana, right? It, it's, if you look at its trajectory, it was going over the ocean and then into Alaska. So, you know, presumably we were tracking its its um, course, you know, well in advance before it actually entered U.S. airspace. And then if we also take into account what the Pentagon said recently that the we were able to block their intelligence gathering, um, I would presume that they were um, unable to gather much intelligence of value when it was over Montana and those sites. So I believe it was one F-22 um, and it was one AIM-9 missile, which is a air-to-air -air missile. Um, Relatively noteworthy because, you know, the F-22 is, is a fifth-generation fighter. It has not seen much, um, you know, actual um, combat. Uh, it doesn't have much combat experience. Um, so it's the fact that we sent such a, you know, sophisticated and, and, and um, a fifth-gen fighter to, to do this is notable because it just was – we were able to test our capabilities, right? It, granted, it was a, a relatively passive target, but nonetheless – um, I think it was probably uh, of value for for um, Department of Defense to to use that asset in this case. Yes, China would request it back, um, and and our response would probably be no. We are not giving them back. However, this is going to be a you know a long term process, right? Like initially, we're going to collect it and do forensics on it. Um, China is going to probably be upset about this and demarch us. Um, it, there will be a, a, a deliberation and a, and a back and forth between our national security establishments and our state departments about, um, you know, it, is the U.S. even amenable to, to you know, returning the, the, the payload to China? I would guess um, that we would not um, simply because of the, the intelligence value that it, that it has to us and the fact that it was went over our sovereign airspace and territory. Um, but really, I think the, the bigger uh, intelligence gain is on the response. Just how would the United States, when would they detect something? When would they start to act like they've detected something? What would they do about the detection of something? Because what we're talking about is uh, operational intelligence that could be useful for wartime. Um, and so this is what is done in intelligence in general, both by intelligence services and by the militaries. Um, you test these response times. And we've seen from the Chinese in recent years the use of the kind of balloons over Taiwan, near Japan, near Korea. So it's not that unusual.